Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm here in Liverpool. Just had the weigh-in for Jack Carroll. Linares, we spoke yesterday about these young prospects coming through and showing you something. I'm getting a vibe that they're, they're up for it this weekend and I'm looking forward to this whole card. It's an underrated card, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's a great card and I think it's a great main event. I think the fight will be a very close fight. I mean, Robert Diaz came over to me and said, we'll be seeing you again after this. They fancy it. Um, Linares looks in unbelievable shape, granted towards the back end of his <laughs> career, but what we do know is put everything into his training camp. And he will give us, the UK fans, the worldwide fans, everything tomorrow night. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a very close fight. Um, I do expect Jack to come through. And as we said yesterday, if you can come through in style, it just helps momentum. That's all. You know, Sam and everyone pushing me for Taylor and the winner of Haney Progre. You go out and you produce a devastating performance. You will get those fights. But I, I don't feel for Jack. I just know that Linares is prepped to the max here. Ismail Salas shouting things in his ear in the head-to-head. -head. They're right up for this and these two coming together are going to give it one last roll of the dice. That's it. Obviously, that Josh Taylor, the winner of Haney Progre, that hanging over these two fighters, man, they're mega fights, huge fights, whether it be here in the, in the UK. So there's a lot more than on this fight than just that WBA in the continental title. Yeah, we've got a lot of guys at 140 who are queuing up for a big fight. Richardson Hitchens, you know, you've got Paro against Montana Love on the Haney Progre card. You've got Haney Progre. Um, you've got Jack Cattrall. Like, the one that's going to get the shot is the one that's going to make the fans and the broadcasters say, I want to see that fight. Because they're the ones who pay for it. So, you know, you look at a Josh Taylor fight, I know that's a mega fight in the UK. And there's a lot of bad blood, there's great history, there's great narrative. And if Jack can go out tomorrow night and stop this guy and look sensational, it, it, it really helps me. It really helps me to make those fights. Which fight do you prefer for Jack? Josh Taylor or the Haney Progre? Look, for the glory of the World Championship, which is what every fighter should be after in the sport, you always want to go after the belts. But you know the build-up for Cattrall, Josh Taylor, would be unbelievable. And, and you know, build-ups drive the size of the fight. So I feel like he deserves another shot at Josh Taylor. I believe he should have got one in the first place when he was champion. But he's no longer champion, and he's probably going to want to catch weight, which is not a problem, I don't think. Um, and I think it would be a tremendous build-up, and I think it would be a great fight. You know, we, we talk about wanting to bring big fights to Britain, and we saw the success of, of Wood Warrington, you know, maybe even a rematch at the City Ground. You know, we're talking about Ben Eubank, and we're talking about Catchall Taylor. And we, we've obviously got Cameron against Taylor as well. Like, these are big fights that we need to make sure we keep on British and Irish soil. And... Um, but Haney or Progre would also, I mean, maybe Regis not, but I think Haney would come to the UK. I think he would, he would love that. So really down to the performance tomorrow night. I'm glad you mentioned Ben Eubank. Now, we spoke yesterday. I mentioned to you about rolling the dice for the 23rd, if you don't hear anything now. Usyk came out and said that he needs a 14-week camp starting from now. So that takes us, well, that fight possibly into the end of January. I think what he said, yeah. I think that was a Ukrainian interview where he said, generally, mm. I like a 14-week camp. I don't think that, you know, I think he picked up some niggles in the Dubois fight. But at the end of the day, it's a huge amount of money. And I think if both fighters are told it has to be the 23rd, they'll probably do it. But I just feel like with Tyson coming off, what's he done, nine, ten weeks for Ngannou, then fighting, and then doing another seven or eight weeks. So you're doing like an 18-week consecutive training camp. I'm sure he can do it, but you do want to be prepped in the best possible way for that fight because whoever's not prepped maybe the difference between winning and losing. There's nine, there's nine weeks to go. I think nine weeks on Saturday till the 23rd of December. So is, do you feel pressure now for that day? If that gets any longer now, you're just going to call it off and maybe go the end of January? I mean, we're kind of ready to go. Look, we've got Anthony Joshua and we've got Conor Ben both want to fight desperately. One can fight on the 23rd, one can fight in January. They can both fight in January. We'll have to see. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that we're ready to go on the 23rd and once we hear but it's also difficult when you've got a site fee in place for the 23rd and they're saying well we're hearing Usyk Fury's going is it going and no one can give them the answers one because they don't really want to tell us obviously because that's how the game works but also because genuinely that is a date that they're looking at but you know if, if Fury picks up any kind of niggle you know it might be I'm not sure what kind of niggle it will be against Ngannou but the fight ain't happening in December regardless of the money. So, 
But he may feel, look, I feel good actually. Like he may go in and just play with Ngannou and go, I'm just actually going to have a week and then I'm going to go back into camp. All good. But I, th- I think Usyk, deep down, would like the fight in January or February. But he will also take the money. Definitely. I would take the money as well, to be fair. Um, just off that now, obviously, we love, you were talking about the back and forth fight, selling the fight. Now, you and Ben Shalom, Ben Shalom's made a little comment uh, on Talkspot's interview on Drive, I think it was yesterday, saying that your comments were nonsensical and uh, damaging to the sport, reference to Dan Aziz's injury and what you said about knowing about the fight being called off. Um, just your response to that? But should, they should listen to the interview. He's such a plonker. I mean, it's like, they played my interview from two weeks ago where I said, I've heard the fight's not happening. So then they were like, the whole thing was, how did you know this, Eddie? Mm. Now, I heard, because we know about ticket sales and we know about everything, I heard that there was a question mark over it taking place. I never said... Dan Aziz has faked an injury. What I said was the same as Spencer Oliver, who works for TalkSport, the same as Johnny Nelson, who works for Sky, which was, it's very unusual for a fighter to get an injury on fight week. I've been promoting for 15 years. I can definitely count it on one hand when a fighter is pulled out through injury on the Wednesday of fight week. It, it hardly ever happens. I didn't say Dan Aziz faked an injury. An, an injury. He's not that kind of guy. So... I think if you're talking about he said, she said, and you're talking about what's right and wrong, let's talk about the refund for fans. You imagine buying a ticket for an event that doesn't take place and is called off. And I go to you, oh, you're going to get your money back. Don't panic. When we find another date for the fight. I'd be like, are you taking the piss out of me? Give me my money back. You were supposed to deliver a date. It didn't happen. Not let me know in two or three weeks. I want my money now. So worry about, you know, rights and wrongs from that side and listen back to my interview and don't be so sensitive. And like, if you are, this is the wrong game for you. So, like, it all gets blown out of control. And I, I feel, feel sorry for Dan Aziz because they led him down the, the garden path. Simon Jordan done a great job of saying, oh, Eddie said this and Eddie said that. Eddie said exactly the same as a talk sport presenter. But because I said I heard the fight weren't happening and it didn't happen, all of a sudden it was like, what did you know? I didn't hear anything about Dan Aziz's injury when I heard the fight might not happen. So, good luck to everybody. Listen, all I, I shouldn't really care, but I care about Joshua Boatsy. I think he's, it's, you know, what's happened to him is just, like, it's, it's, it's such a shame. He's such a good fighter. Like, we, we even struggled to get momentum with him, but we had it, and we had it on a plate for him to fight for the world title for a fortune. But now that momentum, and it's not some of it's his fault because he listened to the wrong people, but a lot of it now is not his fault. And I just, I'd like to see him back in the ring because I think otherwise you become stale and your best days pass you by. Mm. So I hope that they can get the fight on because when they get the fight on, finally people can get their money back. So good luck with that. Quick uh, segue to uh, two parts to this question. Obviously, I want to get your comments on Showtime Boxing, leaving the, the, the sport of boxing and... PBC maybe teaming up with either Amazon or the Zone. If they go with Amazon, that's obviously a competitor to, to you because of the streaming service. But quickly, your thoughts on Showtime leaving the, the sport of boxing? I said yesterday, you know, um, with everything that's been said in the past, you know, sometimes it's like it's not a ha, you know, but it's I think it's more a disappointment for boxing. Showtime have been a fantastic broadcaster. Stephen Espinosa's battled hard for boxing. Two years ago, or whenever it was, I said Showtime will be leaving boxing. The model doesn't work for them. I'd heard that people upstairs were looking at boxing as a product and as a sport. But they battled hard. And part of it was Stephen Espinosa's stubbornness and his his fighting spirit that kept it going. And they've actually had a really good year. But it's not working for them. And, And one of the reasons it's not working for them is because the fighter purses are out of control. And they're not delivering in terms of the value that that price represents. So boxing rights are very expensive. Now, when you get it right, boxing's a huge success. It rates well. It delivers pay-per-views. The arenas are full. But this is, comes back to boxing as a, as a business, what we've got to do better, which is deliver more value for the broadcaster so they stay in the sport. And this is when you go back to misfits. And that's the, probably the danger. I don't look at misfits as taking money off the table of boxing. But if something rates well, and don't forget, those misfit fighters are making peanuts in comparison to probably fighters that you may not even have heard of, you know, third or fourth on the undercard. 
And these guys are delivering numbers, they're driving pay-per-views, they've got millions of subscribers. So the broadcaster in time will look at that model and say, maybe we'll do some more of those if we don't get boxing right. Now, they love boxing, and when it works, it really works. But the problem is, more often than not, if you look at the Showtime ratings historically, they've continued to crumble to a point where there's only outperforming Showtime's numbers on a regular basis. And, you know, but the purses continue to increase, and the advisors and the managers continue to want easy fights that don't deliver. And we're the weak ones because sometimes we let them do it. Mm. So we've got to be, you know, we, we will be parting ways with fighters because some of them don't deliver commercially on the numbers they want. Mm -hmm. And some of them aren't prepared to take the fights that we believe they should be taking. And some of them might want to leave but mainly the first two. So that's really a focus of me as we plan 2024. It's not a case of saying to a fighter, this is the fight you've got to take. Mm -hmm. But it's like, guys, you've had your warm-up fights. No one's interested. We need to make a big fight. It doesn't have to be a 50-50. It can just be competitive. Mm -hmm. And if you win, this is the plan for you. And it's going to get really exciting. And so is the money. And if you lose in a great fight, there's still a plan, plan for you. Yeah, exactly. So fighters go stale through inactivity and having irrelevant fights. We've been guilty of it in the past. Every promoter is guilty of it. We've got to stop that. Mm. We've still got a responsibility to guide a fighter in the right manner. But we've just got to be a little bit tougher. And not worry about losing a fighter because there's this big battle going on. Because mm. I've done that in the past. Every promoter does it. Oh, this fighter, they're going to leave if they don't get this deal and it's an easy fight first. And, oh, can't let them go elsewhere. Sign it. And then you're doing the fight going, why did I actually do this? And then a fighter might leave that wanted easy fights. And then you realise they didn't rate over there either. And it's like, actually, that was good for us. But like Espinosa, you're fighting spirit, you're competitive. You don't want to lose fighters. That's got to change. Because we can't just continuously pay money. The broadcaster can't continuously pay money for shows that don't deliver. And the only way they deliver is when you get it right. A great example, Wood Warrington. Fantastic numbers, great subscription numbers. Right, Full up in the arena. It works when you make a great fight. Do a shit fight, it doesn't work. That leads me on, obviously, the competitiveness, like you were talking about there, obviously. PBC, like I said, they're, they're, they're either going to team up with Amazon and they're going to look at the zone. Again, competitive with Amazon because of the, the streaming platform. Uh, that will obviously give you the kick up the backside there, to work hard. There were, me there were many guys from the PBC who said... Never let our fighter fight on an app. Stream, what's this? And now they're asking to fight on the app. So we, we recognise that was the future. If, if we, we, the zone, can bring PBC to the platform, fantastic. For, for, yeah, for us, for the zone. And maybe then we can make some in-house fights. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm sure that right now, and I know a lot of their fighters are looking saying, I don't have a date because we don't have a broadcaster. And you can't give fighters dates when you don't have broadcast dates. So a lot of those fighters are probably getting a bit jittery and PBC will be on the clock to get a new broadcaster. But they've also got to get the right deal for their business. They're, you know, they're, Al Heyman's a smart guy. It's a good brand. I'm sure they'll find a home, but they need to. Great. Yeah, one final one. Uh, the weather's been terrible, yeah. Eddie. The 5K oh, still on? Are you still up for it? Absolutely. I mean, isn't running in the pouring rain mm -hmm. part of the crack? Especially when you're a big old lump. You know what I mean? So, I'm not a big old lump anymore. Yeah, I'm still a big old lump. I will be there tomorrow I expect you to be as well Parsons tried to pull out he was like oh I've heard there's a storm coming in tomorrow <laughs> there's no serotonin in the storm son is there really I thought it was just in the the brightness of the sun anyway yeah we'll see you tomorrow for the 5k anyone watching in Liverpool join us 10am see you there Eddie thanks very much mate thank you